it's a rare second take video for CCNC because the previous one, the audio failed. However, I think this is going to be a mint video about Van Vloot and how she won, why she won, and maybe the reasons as to how it could have gone very differently if two riders or three riders had acted differently. So we look at the profile here, Mount Kira, similar to the men's, basically just a couple laps shorter. Uh, originally Van Vluten before she broke her elbow and binned it. I've got a video which we will be on the screen somewhere now about it. Um, yeah, she would have attacked there, but alas, she did not because she broke her elbow and therefore she waited and, well, she was basically working with Voss before Voss got spat on the last climb at Mount Pleasant and then she went for herself. So if we look at sort of the results, obviously everyone knows, but um, there was some strong breaks um, before with like Leanne Lipper, um, Ultra Ludwig, Cassini Udoma, Longa Borghini, Ashley Milman Paso, and I think Lotte Kabekias was there as well, um, who every time of the climb were the strongest riders. So what it meant was that it wasn't exactly like a normal run into the finish. So we managed to sort some footage on the Twitter. It seems like Twitter is a good way to find well, footage on this. So anyway, this is sort of the setup. Ashley Milman Paso, Leanne Lipper, Bor Longa Borghini, um, Sierra, Cassini Udoma, uh, Ultra Lilburg, Elise Shabby, um, sorry, yeah, it's not Elise Shabby, not Marlon Rose, I was getting confused before, Persico, um, is there. So, anyway, coming back is Neve Fisher Black, Juliette Lebu, and Annemiek Van Vluten, I believe. Um, yeah, I think, I think that was who was coming back. So, anyway, what we're gonna do is have a look, have a look at this. So, Van Vluten's actually second wheel now. These people are slowing down because, um, Moment Passo has been on the front for a decent amount of time. This group is too big. This is the other thing. If it was like four or five riders, it's different. But this group was quite big. So what it meant was that no one wanted to work because Italy had two riders as well. Persico may be the quickest in the group, um, except Kopecky. So why would anyone work? It, does, it doesn't make sense. So you can see here, everyone's sort of chilling out. It's like two, three wide here. Obviously, the pace is not high because otherwise it'll be strung out. People are freewheeling. Look at Sierra here, freewheeling. So no stress. Uh, a lot of Kopecky also barely right pedaling either. And what we're going to see in a minute, uh, or a second actually, is Van Vluten. Now, Van Vluten is attacked into the back of this, and that allows someone with even minimal punch, like Van Vluten, to have a massive speed advantage because you've done all the work into the draft of the people. So the acceleration, which obviously requires the most energy uh, to get up to speed, you've done in the draft. So then trying to maintain the speed is significantly easier. And this is this is number one thing that Van Vluten does right. Um, I mean, it's by racing 101, it's pretty obvious stuff, but she does do it perfectly. Also attacks on the other side of the road. Now, this is the key thing to look at the sort of composition of the group. So Leanne Lippert, decent finisher. Ultra Allegra, decent finisher. Longa Borghini, Persco, we're going to talk in a minute. Sierra, okay finish. Cassini Udoma, okay finish, but only really on a climb. Not great. Kopecky fastest there. At least Shabby, it is what it is. She, she's quick, um, but not, you know, not absolutely unbelievable. So when van vluten attacks there's there's no one obvious you know if this was um you know if we sort of flipped it around it was an obvious domestic um for italy not longo borghini then yeah for sure you know they chase it but instead longo borghini she's been in the break she probably had good legs well she definitely had good legs because she made every break so she probably backed herself to to you know do it sorry for the noise it seems like my house is very noisy these days um and persico has basically decided again that she's She's probably going to be the sprinter in this situation, which which wasn't a bad call. But what it meant was that everyone else knew Italy had two riders. So there's no need to chase because Italy will chase, surely. You know, uh, as always in the situations, I always think, you know, if you're a team, you might as well chase um, because the worst comes the worst. You, you know, you don't get the win. But if you don't chase, zero chance to win. And I think that's the thing. But instead, what happens is no one's actually clocked her at this point. She's going maybe five to ten kilometers an hour quicker and no one's clocked her going past. We'll go through a couple of things. No one's seen her here. She's now, you know, level with the back of the riders. No one's seen her. Kopecky looks there. She sees her. No reaction. Goes, you know what? It is what it is. Someone else is going to chase it. She, she gambles, right? Like they will do. You can see here, Sierra sees her. Again, gambles. Kopecky looks like she moves out. She looks like she's trying to go across, but maybe that's just because she thinks people ahead will move across. Moment Passio still has no idea what's going on. But, like, the speed that she comes past. Then Leanne Lippert looks. Um, Julia Lebu, I think, is trying to get, get through as well. But that's not happening either. So now this situation, you know, she's, she's got, like, what, three bike lengths? But it's not game over. But the thing is this. Longo Borghini is boxed now. You know, this, this gap closes. And she can't get through. And I think that's the issue. Is that then, you know, you've got... Moment Passo has been on the front a lot. 
okay, yeah, she's strong, but like her bringing her back would be a big effort. You know, it wouldn't be like, you know, someone, someone a lot stronger where it would be, okay, it's a fine effort. I can do it. It would be her, it'll be her race winning move. Ultra look wig again, and she goes here. Everyone's going to follow her. Um, these two, I guess, just didn't have the legs to get back across. So now the gap's really gone out. That's like to the point of, it's not just our, you know, it's a five, six pedal strokes. It's like, oh, this is like a, probably a 10 to 15 second sprint to get across. Um, and then you can see Donga Bulwini starts to go here. And this is the bit I don't get. She's obviously boxed before, but starts to go now. But then when we're going to flip to the other camera angle and suddenly she's not going. No one's going. They're fanned across the road and that's it. Done. Thanks for coming. It doesn't matter how much gas you have now. Like at this point, the acceleration is just too much um, to get, try and get across. Longa Borghini, like instead of going on the barriers now, is just boxed in, doing nothing. Purse goes here. Um, and like, yeah, that's basically it. Like the race is done then, then and then. It doesn't really matter because Montpassu is still in the front. No one's come around. That means the pace is not high. They go up the hill where obviously Van Bluzen is going to be stronger than most of these people on the climb because she's um, just a lot better climber than everyone else. Um, and then, yeah. You can see the two Italians side by side and no one thinks maybe I should leave each other out. They just go for themselves. And that, I think, is really the, the symptomatic issue of, of the chase is that, you know, you have two teammates and no one wants to go. If no one wants to go, why would you work? If I was any of the other team members, like, you know, what is the point of working? That There is zero point working because, you know, you've got two teammates and you might just get mugged. So you're not going to risk your own chances. And you can see here, Leanne Lippert finally, I think, on the right-hand side decides, you know, it is what it is. We've got to go early, otherwise we're not going to catch her. Correct decision. She goes now, and it just doesn't really matter, to be honest. Lotta Kopecky on the left-hand side, as we look at it, is the strongest sprinter. Um, but, you know, it's uphill. It's an uphill drag. You know, it's just, like, they close a lot, but she's just not going to get it. So that was it, really. Um, pretty interesting sprint. Should Van Bluten have been even there? No, I think she should have been DQ'd. And you might say that's harsh, but what's the point of having rules if you don't enforce them? You've got a perfect way to enforce it and you don't enforce it. You give her a fine, which you can't do. Nah, should be DQ'd. I, I think it's really obvious in UCI rules. It's like you have a rule, you stick to it. It doesn't matter if it's stupid because I don't think it is. I think, you know, clothing rules are, are what they should be. DQ'd. Simple. Like, you know, there'll be uproar, but they DQ'd someone else from motor pacing back in and everyone was uproar then. And that was like, you know, question whether it's a rule. So you can't argue. The rule's there. Can't go over halfway through your leg. Should be DQ'd. And I think... This is probably a very unpopular decision because, you know, oh, it doesn't count. But, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere. You have the rule. You have a way of enforcing the rule. You have an exact way of penalising if you break the rule. But you bottle it. You give her a fine. <sighs> Irrelevant. I, I just think, you know, OK, fine. You can't measure everyone's socks before they start. But, like, you know, it's, it's not like she's some nobody. Like, it's not like she's not going to win or, you know, get a good result. Like, she, she her socks are that high. You must have seen her. The commissaires must have seen her. Surely you go over and say... Nah, I mean, cheerio, ciao, ciao, you're off. I mean, you know, how high would they have to be before they would DQ her? At this rate, I think never. So then it's pointless having a rule. I think it, it, it annoys me because it's a rule which I think is good because I think you look stupid if you have socks that high. Um, and it's a rule that you can enforce and you refuse to enforce it. So, you know, obviously everyone knows you say I don't enforce rules because, you know, they just do what they want. But I think on this situation, there's no argument. Like, you know, you can say, oh, it's a stupid rule, but it doesn't matter if it's a stupid rule. You know, the rule's there. You apply all the rules or you don't. If you either, and if you apply all the rules, which they should, then she's DQ'd. And there's no arguing about it. She can't argue about it. She knows the rules. Everyone does. It's just a joke. But, and if I was Lotta Kopecky, I would have gone for it. I know everyone's like, oh, you know, it's you know, against the spirit, all this stuff. It's like, nah, nah. If I was a world champ, she wore those socks. <laughs> Cheerio. Thanks for coming. I'd be like all over it. Just be like, nah, nah, nah. She's not having that. Even though it made no difference, I would agree it probably made very minimal difference. You know, as we're talking about two centimeters of fabric on each leg, it can't be much, can it? But it's the principle, isn't it? You know, um, you know where are we gonna go? Cyclocross tires are supposed to be thirty three mil or oh, thirty five? Oh, we'll just let it go. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. But anyway, that's my rant about Anna Van Blue and how she won and also why she should be DQ'd. Uh, controversial opinion, but as always, I think it's very obvious that the rules should be applied. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Should have some more content coming out recently, uh, coming out soon, sorry, um, with Cop Agostini, I think, coming out uh, tomorrow. So we'll have some view video on that.